Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today is Sunday, so you know what that means. It's time to go around the net with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. So on the docket for today, we have Visa and MasterCard checking in, hiking some interchange fees. We have the retirement of a USAA legend. Curve Card is making an appearance, and the latter half of this show is going to be American Express heavy with some interesting data points of what exactly is the DNA of a Platinum or Centurion card holder. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button and let's get to work. Now, before we start the news, shameless plug, here on the channel during the month of March, we run the Credit Card Madness Tournament, so it's our take on March Madness, the NCAA Basketball Tournament. Now, over this past weekend, we wrapped up the Sweet 16 round, and we will have the Elite Eight for you on Tuesday this go-around, as I think on Monday we should have the Chase Q2 categories um, announced, so a little bit of a change there, but if you haven't been participating or haven't seen it yet, I'll link it down below for you so you can get caught up, and of course, there's still plenty plenty of time to jump in, join the fun, and make sure your favorite credit card has a chance to be crowned champion of 2022. So once again, all that will be down below for you. Um, so shameless plug concluded. Let's move on to the news. And the first story we have is Visa and MasterCard. So if you're unfamiliar, Visa and MasterCard, Discover, and American Express, they are payment networks, payment processing networks um, that the card issuers use to facilitate you know, the transactions that they happen when we swipe our card. Now, these guys end up making money in a few different ways, but one of the main ways they make money is called interchange fees, or what we kind of call swipe fees. Well, originally, these fees were set to increase, and that got delayed, but now the increase is happening again. So let's take a look at this. So here we have it, Visa and MasterCard. They are raising the merchant fees that, that they make from consumer credit cards. Now, I don't know exactly by how much, but this is going to begin in April of 2022, so next month. Now, again, this was originally scheduled to happen two years ago, but like most things, delayed due to the pandemic. Now, again, most of the increase will come from higher interchange fees. They do make money in other ways. <laughs> Now, as to be expected, merchants or the retailers are pushing back. So U.S. retailers have asked the Federal Trade Commission and the Department of Justice to investigate the fees. Now, here's a quote from the, real, the retailer's letter from Payments.com. It says, quote, we believe U.S. authorities should look closely at what Amazon has done in the U.K. and need to be aware that many retailers here feel the same. The letter stated, despite the reversal, Amazon's move shows how frustrated even the largest retailers are over skyrocketing swipe fees and the situation is even even worse for small retailers. Now, of course, MasterCard and Visa had a response and they say, quote, the ability to accept card payments helped businesses survive the pandemic and the fees have helped cover costs connected to innovation and fraud. So there you have it. That's what's happening now. You know, this is kind of more of the same. Now, the problem here, like anything going on now with inflation is the person who ends up losing is the end customer. The person holding the bag at the end is usually the one who comes up on the short end of the stick. And I think this will happen as well. I mean, Visa and MasterCard are going to do this. We're still going to use our credit cards. And, you know, there's also an argument to be made that taking cash is, you know, more expensive, more security, that whole thing. But they're going to do it regardless. And they'll probably be passed on to us at some point. You know, things will start to go up even more or, you know, especially those smaller places where, you know, they charge you more for credit card than cash. Now, I also think some of the big, big retailers may try to go like the Costco route where Costco negotiates their own fee with Visa. That's why Costco doesn't take MasterCard. They just take Visa and the Costco card by city is also a Visa card. I think some of the big retailers can probably copy that model and try to negotiate just because they do so much volume that that shouldn't be that far out of the realm of possibility. But then that could take us down another path of, you know, Visa and MasterCard being totally separate depending on who you negotiated with. So that's just kind of some speculation on my part. But of course, let me know what you think down below. And if anything does come of this, we will, of course, have it for you. Now we move on to two quick hits here. First one is from USAA Credit Union, something we don't talk about a lot, but they had a really good card that actually gave you 2.5x back on all purchases. It was a cash back card. And now this card is actually being retired. So this is more of a public service announcement. Let's take a look at this go. They are discontinuing the limitless card, 2.5x on all purchases. Now this is going to happen on April 26. So existing card holders will be converted to the preferred cash rewards card, which gives you 1.5x back on all purchases. However, they will earn an additional 1x until the end of this year, December 31st. So basically 2.5x and tax payments will no longer earn cash back. 
So overall, if you have this card, I was reading through some of the comments and it seems like folks who had this card were saying that this card was always meant to be an experiment or a pilot program or something. So this was always coming. I mean, 2.5x back is crazy um, that a credit union, even the biggest one in the country, USA, could sustain that. So, you know, it, it's come, coming to an end and then, you know, they almost don't even need to add the tax payments won't count as cash back anymore because 1.5x back is not enough of a return to make it worth paying your taxes with a credit card. But um, there, they wanted some extra insurance. And the 2.5x rate, it was enough. It was more than enough. So there you go. Now, moving on to a new card coming to the States, we have a follow-up on the Curve card. So if you remember the Curve card, I believe it's active in Europe. I think the UK It's basically a card by a company that allows you to put all your credit cards into one card. And then, you know, it'll either be smart enough to know based on where you're using the card, which one to use, or you can even go back and do the purchase retroactively through another card that was linked. Well, they had a wait list for quite some time. And then we've seen this before. Will they, won't they, will it come out? Well, it's finally here for the first 100 users on the wait list. And we do have some additional information on that. So let's take a look at this. So Curve Card arrived. So now live for the first 100 people on the wait list. Um, the card allows you again to combine all cards into one, kind of, because right now users are saying you can do MasterCard and Discover. There's no Visa or Amex yet, though it's probably in the works potentially. Now charges post as a credit card transaction, not a debit card. That was a question. And additionally, the intro offer is 10x back on $10,000 in spend for the first six months. So over Overall, that is not really a bad intro offer. Now, again, it's a super, super small, shallow uh, pilot group, if you will. So hopefully if you're on the wait list, you know, it's probably a pretty big wait list, but we'll see more details come out as more people get the card. And then, you know, hopefully Amex and, and Visa can get added to it. You know, overall, that's not a bad sign of bonus. But again, there was a big question about is this a credit or a debit card? So it looks like this is a credit card. Um, so just be aware of that. So with that, we now move on to the Amex side of the show. So we have a few different American Express stories. We'll take them in quick order. Then we will do some quick thoughts at the end of this to close one someone out. So first things first, a lot of you were very interested in the Amex uh, personal checking account that we had in the news a few weeks ago. Well, it looks like they may be replicating this on the business side as well. So let's take a look at this. So this is very much kind of a rumor, more so Amex may be considering this, that they would make a business checking account that earns rewards. So this is the details that we have. It'd be a 20,000 membership reward point sign up bonus, which is nice. Uh, the debit card would earn half a point MR points on purchases. Um, you're looking at a 1.1% APY and zero monthly fees. So this is basically would be the business version of the personal one that they have. Now they also already have two business ones. They have American Express Business and Cabbage as well, which Cabbage is kind of a separate thing. So I don't know if this would end up being a third account or they would kind of just roll these benefits into the current Amex uh, business checking account and those people would get membership reward sign and bonuses instead of like the $300 that I got to sign up for. But if a checking account isn't your thing, we have the world's largest Centurion Lounge. So this is going to be in Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta International Airport, or ATL, in Concourse E. Now, the size of this is going to be about 26,000 square feet, launching in somewhere around 2023. The attractions or amenities that we at least have um, information on right now is they're going to have outdoor spaces. They're, they're it's described as multiple outdoor spaces, terrace kind of view, so much so that you're outside kind of not literally on the tarmac, but you might be overlooking the tarmac or something like that. I'm um, a full buffet, a bourbon bar, I'm um, Southern design based on like the local culture of Atlanta. And of course, there will be more details to come closer to uh, the launch. Now, this is pretty interesting because, again, Atlanta is like one of the largest airports. It's a huge Delta hub as well. So you probably have a lot of people with Platinum as well as Delta Reserve. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if 26,000 square feet is enough. Now, the third story we have, and this was the most interesting to me, is what is the DNA of a Platinum or Centurion card holder? So, um, OMAT, or One Mile at a Time, got this information from another blog. I'll link it down below, but I do believe the initial source information has been pulled. Um, but they're talking about Departures. So, Departures is like the best perk on the Amex card, and the fact that you get a special magazine just for you. And there's also a Centurion version as well. Basically worthless. I, think, I don't think they mail it home. I think it's all online now. 
But anyways, as departures, basically, it's basically a magazine full of ads, right? It's like if you just watch this YouTube video over and over again with all the ads for watches and, and cool things like that. So as a result, departures is a company has to show target demographic information to brands to see who they're marketing to. And so as a result, OMAT or the person OMAT used actually found, you know, a press kit for both of these departures for Platinum and Centurion. So we can see you know, what they were telling folks for, um, who were going to advertise with them. So let's take a look at this and what the DNA of each one of these card holders looks like from the departures list. So here you have it. I'm calling it fancy card stats. So on the left, we have the platinum stats. Average net worth, 4.3 million. Household income, 474,000. Average age is 56. The number of properties is 3.6. On the right-hand side, you have the centurion or the black card stats. Average net worth, 11.4 million. Household income, 1.8 million. Average age of 57 and about six properties total. So again, I think this works. Again, I think the source material has been pulled, which leads me to believe more so that this is more accurate than I originally thought when I included this. Overall, it's not surprising, but it's kind of surprising because, you know, I think when, when banks and companies have cards like the Platinum card, you know, especially if you think about the Bank of America Elite card that came out for $550. When you talk about a person like this, this person probably doesn't want multiple cards, right? They'd be an outlier if they did. They want one card, maybe two, that just works and does all the things they want. And I don't think that they care so much about earning points as much as other people do. You know, that's possible some people in that group are also card people, but I don't think that's really the case. And that kind of speaks to what we always say here is that we're very rarely the target demo for honestly any of these banks because they deal with us, they tolerate us, but you can see they don't like us. Part of that, in my opinion, is the fee hike. They try to get you to go away. Other part of it is pop-up jail where they clearly, in Amex's case, want people who use and spend on their cards. They don't want the sock drawer cards that we have on a lot of these other issuers. And so, you know, this just kind of speaks to it. Even if you're watching this, I know from talking to you guys, there are people in the comment section who, you know, are Bank of America Platinum Honors. There are people who chase private banking, private client in this audience, but we still don't necessarily tend to be, you know, the same target demographic because it's almost two parts. It's one do you financially fit their target demographic? And two, do you mentally fit, I guess, would be the best way to say it. I always describe it as we're very value-focused, value-driven people. And you could have four or five million dollars, but if something's not necessarily good value to you, you might not be interested in it. Where these people fit financially, and then they don't probably care as much about the value. They maybe care about the ease of use or the convenience. So I'll, I'll make this one short, then I'll turn it over to you. I think you know, when you travel for work, right, this is the best analogy I can think of. When you travel for work, your company either gives you per diem, which means, hey, you get $75 a day for food, or you have to do expense reports. And when you get per diem, you have like two types of people. You have the people who look at like, hey, I get $75 no matter what, but I'm going to try to save all that $75 so it's a little bit extra in my check. And maybe I eat at the hotel and eat at the client's spot, whatever it is, cheap as possible. Then you have other people who look at it as like, oh, I have a $75 coupon for dinner. Maybe I get dessert. Maybe I get a bottle of wine, what have you. Amex wants the people who look at it as a coupon, not really making fun of the coupons in, in this specific analogy, but because you'll just use your platinum card or use your gold card and then, oh, I happen to get a discount here, discount here. That's why their tagline is don't live life without it. So I say all that to say, I think this really speaks to the target demographic and why we aren't usually in it, though parts of us are. We're just not fully in it, and that's why we're always kind of at war with Amex. They tolerate us, but clearly they're going after as a specific group. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit surprising because I would have thought the age would have skewed lower, honestly. Um, it seems like the stuff they're adding, they're marketing to a lower age than anything else. Not calling anyone old. But anyways, guys, I'll leave it there. So if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And of course, back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. My question for you guys is, one, check out the March Madness Tournament. Let me know who you think is going to win and how it's shaping up so far. And number two, let me know what you think about these stories, specifically the Amex ones, that, that lounge. What do you think? about it the size wise and the dna the platinum and the centurion card holders love to get your thoughts on that anyways guys that's gonna do it for this one as always thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you very soon on monday